Okay, Real Progressives, this is Jeff Ginter with Real Progressives. It's Wednesday, July 4th. Happy Independence Day. Uh, I'm going to give it a few seconds for people to come on. Uh, please invite your friends, invite your enemies, invite strangers, invite people you've never met. Just randomly go through Facebook and just say, hi, here's a video. Um, I'm not sure how many people are going to come on tonight. It is 4th of July. I know most people will have other plans. But it being 4th of July, I wrestled with the idea of should I go on, should I not. Um, Steve gave me the idea that maybe people wouldn't be uh, doing fireworks. I know that in my area of the world, sometimes uh, they don't do it on the 4th of July. Sometimes they do it on the 3rd. So I guess there might be more people than I thought. But what really made me want to go on tonight is the concept of independence. What is independence? We fought a war for independence. We're certainly celebrating the independence from England and from oppression. And I know there's a lot of feeling that we're still being oppressed. I mean, we're on Facebook right now, and you don't have to uh, be very imaginative or have a lot of friends to probably have had someone say something about Facebook algorithms uh, suppressing content. You know, and there's a lot to that. Uh, certainly, if you are so inclined, you will feel oppression in one form or another. Uh, and I want to talk about that. I want to talk about that very badly. And this is really what we're talking about here tonight, the Declaration of Independence. The Declaration of Independence was signed, as you know, July 4th, 1776. It's written by Thomas Jefferson, and there are some things that it says that I would like everyone to see. The Unanimous Declaration of the Thirteen United States of America, when in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and the laws God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. This is my favorite part coming up. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it, and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence indeed will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light and transient causes. And accordingly, all experience hath, hath shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. That, for me, is the big deal. They fought a war, and look at how they phrased it. All men are created equal. They didn't talk about women. They didn't specify all men, you know, because God knows they kept slaves. So, not all men. No. This country was founded on blood. Blood and lies. And we are not in a position to be able to deny that. Ask any Native American, ask anyone of African heritage, ask anyone with brown skin, black skin, ask any woman, do you feel equal? hope that there are some that do. I certainly don't want to be able to make a point that is universal, and I don't want to make anyone feel less than they do 
just because I say that there was rampant racism and sexism. Let everyone choose for themselves. But I think we can definitely agree that there is certainly anecdotal evidence to suggest that we are not free. We are not free economically. We are not free socially. Freedom is to be earned. Freedom is not to be asked for. Freedom is to be demanded. No power on earth will ever relinquish its power kindly. No power on earth will ever relinquish its power at all unless it is demanded. Now we are at a crossroads. A lot of people are saying that we're headed for a second civil war. I don't think so. No, certainly not in the classical sense. The civil war was fought amongst states. If there is to be another civil war, it ain't going to look like what we had. It's not going to be state against state. We're not going to be marching armies on one another. Because what we have right now is a class warfare. We have oligarchs. We have plutocrats. We have rich people and rich corporations taking more and more and more for themselves. Exclusively for themselves. And they are leaving nothing left for anyone else. So if we are going to have a civil war on that definition, it's not going to look like what it was. But we have a choice. We have an opportunity to guide a change. We have an opportunity to seize this moment and determine that I will not have violence. It will be a revolution. It will be a political revolution. It will be an economic revolution, but it will be a bloodless revolution. If there is to be a second civil war, let it be done amongst economists and people. Let it be done amongst diplomats and statesmen. Let's not allow it to be bloody. So my first point here on the Declaration of Independence that we celebrate is that we do not do as they did. We do not start a war. So for those that were hoping that there was going to be a Brim and Firestone speech here, that we're going to take arms to the streets, no. You've never been listening to me if you thought that that's something I was ever going to say. No violence. I abhor violence, and if you espouse violence, you are not my ally. No matter how much we may agree on just about everything, if the one thing we disagree on is the means of which to get it, and you espouse violence and I don't, we will go our separate ways. But there are some other things that the text of the Declaration say that I think we should pay attention to. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. Well, we've already said, that's not good enough. All people are created equal. Man, women, black, white, Asian, Latino, it doesn't matter. If you're a carbon-based life form, you are created equal. Endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. Or whether you agree with a creator or not we have inalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The one thing I will point out in this document that I do agree with, they, they include the word among. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Meaning they are not the only rights. These are simply big overarching rights that we will declare onto ourselves that we have. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But that's not all we have. And I do appreciate the inclusion of that word, among. That to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men. Again, that word men. Deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Meaning we cannot tolerate an oligarchy. We cannot condone a plutocracy. We cannot condone fascism. We cannot condone dictatorships. It says right here, to secure these rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, 
Governments are instituted among men deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. This is the ballgame. This is everything as far as I'm concerned. It tells us that government has a role in securing life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Tell me exactly how much liberty do I have if I cannot afford health insurance? How much liberty do I have if I am tied to a job because that's the only way I get health insurance? That is economic slavery. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is anathema to insurance-based health care systems. So in other words, government is required to be able to provide single-payer health care. The Declaration of Independence comes right out and says that governments are instituted to be able to ensure the blessings of liberty, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The Constitution, Article 1, Section 8, and the Preamble both state unequivocally that they are to pay to the public purpose. Two documents, the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, in two places, state that government is supposed to be able to provide for the people. So every one of you all who get in my face and say, it's not government's job to be able to give you health insurance, I say, no, you don't know what you're celebrating today. You have no clue, no concept of what you're celebrating today. And you also have no concept of economics. Because if you understood economics, if you understood federal finance, that which you are afraid of, that we're going to raise your taxes, take money from you, you don't give a shit what you get in return for that money. You just can't stand that someone is coming to take your money. That's what you're afraid of. And I'm telling you to your face, that's not the way it works ever. The federal government doesn't need your money. It was its money in the beginning. When it created it, it found its way to you. It doesn't need its own money back. Article 1, Section 8 says it creates its own currency. So right off the top, not only are you afraid of the wrong things, instead of being afraid that you could one day be one of the 300,000 that die every year as a result of for-profit health insurance, instead of being afraid of that, you're afraid that Uncle Sam is coming for a few of your bucks. You're afraid of the wrong things. And you use that fear to say, well, it's not government's job in the beginning. Well, I'm sorry. Here on Independence Day, I will show you again. Here it is. Governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. They do this to get us rights, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Everyone that is wearing a flag as an article of clothing today can't stand that someone actually sat down during a game to protest police brutality because it's disrespecting the flag, but you wear it as a bikini, you wear it as a bandana, you wear it as an article of clothing. The military lovingly, reverently puts it up the flagpole and then lovingly and reverently brings it back down and folds it. And for so many of y'all, it's running up the crack of your ass. But you're out there with a beer going, America, America, USA, USA. The very declaration that you are celebrating today calls you a liar. I'm not calling you a liar. The Declaration of Independence, Thomas Jefferson is calling you a liar. Thomas Jefferson said it was the responsibility of government to provide, amongst other things, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And if we cannot get life, liberty, or the pursuit of happiness because we are chained to a desk for a job that we don't love because it's the only way we can get health insurance for our family. That is not life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That is indentured servitude. This 
is our Declaration of Independence. It is the job, it is the responsibility of every citizen. By all means, watch your American Idol. Watch your TV. But if nothing else, once a year, once a year, I want you to be able to take a look at the Constitution of the United States. I want you to look at the Declaration of Independence just one day out of the year. I want you to re-examine these documents. It is your responsibility, your civic responsibility as a citizen to re-evaluate. Does the Constitution, does the Declaration of Independence still hold true to our values? Are we holding up the proper values of these documents? What do you think of these? Have you read them? If you haven't read them, what the hell are you doing? I know we have freedom in this country, and that also includes the freedom to do nothing. But there's a problem with doing nothing. And this is it. I showed this last week. For 30 years after World War II, as we produced more and more and more, GDP went up, and we got to share in the spoils. Not equally, but as we produced more, a prosperity that could not happen without workers. Can't happen. If you got a great idea and you want to form a great company, God love you. Make a profit. But you can't do it on your own. You didn't build the roads that allowed your suppliers to come. You did not create and supply the police departments and the fire stations on your own to help you out if anything goes wrong. And you sure as hell didn't create the product yourself. At every stage of the game, no matter how smart you are, no matter how wonderful you are, you could not possibly have done it yourself. People helped you. And for 30 years, as we, the people, helped create the prosperity of the United States, those of us at least that were white men got to share in it. But look at what happens after the 1970s. Less and less. GDP continues to go through the roof. And we get nothing. We get nothing. So when you consider what we reflect on today, the day of independence, are we free? Are we equal? The Declaration says all men are created equal. Well, those that created the documents that we revere today were misogynists. They engaged in slavery. They engaged in genocide. Now, I'm not going to sit here, stand here, do whatever. I'm not going to lecture anyone that says, I will take everything that you have done in the course of your lifetime, and if there's anything that you ever did, that I don't agree with, I will then scrap everything. That's not the way it works. You want to be one of the good guys, then you're going to have to keep more of an open mind than that. You're going to have to stop shutting people down just because they said something you don't like and then ignore everything else that they said that you do like. So the founding fathers were a bunch of genocidal fucks, slave owners, and didn't give a shit about women. Certainly not enough to give them any kind of rights, let alone equal rights. But, they did give us a framework. A framework from which we have been able to do amendments. It's one of the biggest geniuses of the Constitution itself, the fact that it is allowed to be changed. Which is from where I derive the concept that every citizen must reflect on the Constitution. Does it still stand up to scrutiny? The Constitution was not, there was the ink on the Constitution wasn't even dry before they amended it ten times. We call it the Bill of Rights. And then they continued to amend it. And amend it, and amend it, and amend it. And they made amendments to get rid of amendments. An amendment to ban alcohol, we call it prohibition. And then another amendment to repeal that one. 
we have constantly updated our definition. Constantly. So we gave blacks the right to vote. We gave women the right to vote. We have constantly included more and more and more of the country in the rights that the founding fathers enumerated, but wanted to reserve it just for themselves. But they did give a backdoor, the amendment process. So we're not done. We are not done yet. Are we free? I say we're not. Do we have the rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness? No, we don't. FDR, in his second Bill of Rights, said that we should be free of unfair competition. Not to say we shouldn't have competition. For those of you who are diehard capitalists, Nancy Pelosi, Nancy, we will never have single-payer health care because we're capitalists, Pelosi. I'm not anti-capitalist. But capitalism, by itself, by its very nature, has no passion, no empathy, no compassion. It has no anima. It has no human emotion. And I am not going to trust a private citizen from whom I can ask nothing and for whom I can do nothing. And trust that they will be fair and just. I won't do it. There are some aspects of society with which we must have strict adherence to no profit. I'm sorry, this is not the place for capitalism. Healthcare, education, infrastructure military. These are for the common good, to be used for the common good, for the betterment of society, not so that you can get a buck, man. But you got a great idea for a company? Fantastic. You want to be able to make a profit? Absolutely. But there are going to be rules of the road. Why? Because we're supposed to be free from unfair competition. I'm supposed to be able to have another idea and enter the marketplace and compete with you. The free market that all you capitalists say is so wonderful and so important, but you have set up so many roadblocks to keep people out of it. Once you have achieved success, you utilize your success to deny it to other people. You don't want any competition whatsoever, let alone undo unfair competition. Well, that's going to have to change has to. The democratic process will come for you, which is why you've been going after the democratic process with voter suppression. That's why you've been going after the democratic process with electronic voting machines that have no ability to be able to be audited because it's proprietary software and it doesn't have paper ballots, doesn't have paper receipts so we can actually compare what we did to what the computer tells us we did. You've been busy. You've been very busy, and we have been very much asleep. I'm sorry to tell you, I, I hate to be able to be the bearer of bad news on this day of celebration, but we are waking the fuck up. We are looking around us, and we understand that we are outgunned because we have been outpositioned. But we outnumber you. You got money? That's really nice. It's nice to have money. You're organized. That's nice. But there's so few of you. And there's so many of us. And we are waking up. And once we are sufficiently awoke, sufficiently educated, and sufficiently mobilized, you are fucked. Because there is nothing that you can do with all your money to be able to stop us once we decide, it's time that you stop. It's why I do what I do. It's why Real Progressives does what it does. To educate people. To educate people to federal finance. To get people to stop fighting amongst themselves. You don't have to put up with the scraps. You don't have to fight for the little bit that you have left because you're afraid that you will lose more. Remember, you're already losing more. 
you know who was president and who was in charge of Congress during the last 40 years? Everyone, Democrats and Republicans, in the White House, in the House of Representatives, in the Senate. And you're still losing. You're still losing. It doesn't matter who goes. Democrats and Republicans, neither one as a party wants you to have what you want. They will say, boo-hoo, we would love to get you what you want. We think it's absolutely terrible that we can't get you single-payer health care, but we simply can't afford it. Bullshit! It's called federal appropriations. The same way you fight for war, the same way you make bombs and drop them liberally upon everything. No one raises taxes, no one cuts programs to be able to afford war. We don't have to do it for single-payer health care, for free college tuition, for everyone to forgive student loan debt. We don't have to do any of that. Remember, for 40 years, doesn't matter whether it was a Democrat or Republican, we still get this. Woman feared she couldn't afford ambulance after her leg was trapped by a subway train. Are you effing kidding me? Didn't think that she could afford what had happened to her. Woman got her leg caught between the platform and the train. Got a wound so deep that she had to go to the hospital. And what was she saying? Look at that. Look at that. You don't understand. I have terrible insurance. Everybody just kept saying, don't worry about that. You need medical help. I have terrible insurance. Are you kidding me? Everyone here that says that you need to be able to pay for your health care on your own, do you have any idea how much it costs to take care of your own health care on your own? Or that you have to pay for health insurance on your own? That itself is already incredibly expensive. And we have had wage suppression for 40 years. As we get less and less out of our paychecks, we have to get more and more out of bank loans, credit card loans, predatory lenders. This economy runs on sales. It runs on us. We have to have the disposable income to be able to purchase or you get nothing. If we stop spending, it's instant recession. If we continue to stop spending, it's instant depression. We need to have the disposable income to spend, or everyone else gets nothing. Have to be able to pay for your own health insurance. We have allowed a system where insurance companies, medical manufacturing companies, pharmaceutical companies, hospitals, some doctors even, have been able to charge obscene amounts obscene amounts. But all put together, the system allows it to happen. Insurance companies get contracts with hospitals and other medical practices to be able to provide health care, to pay for it. They get contracts. So when the people, the pharmaceutical companies and the hospitals and the doctors, whenever they just raise their rates, the insurance companies, more often than not, just start paying. It's incredibly immoral the way the system has been allowed to explode. Ever since Richard Nixon, who took us off the gold standard, God bless him, but then also allowed for HMOs, allowed for the first time for a profit to enter health care. And ever since that day, as soon as profit became the motive behind who pays for it, we have lost. Who wins with for-profit health care? Oligarchs. Who loses? Everyone else. 
this lady, you know, did the right thing. She has health insurance. But it's shit health insurance. You have any idea how much it costs just to get an ambulance? No, you don't. You know why? Because it's different everywhere. The cost of what happens in St. Louis is going to be different from what happens in Kansas, different what happens in the uh, Palo Alto, California, different in Manhattan, different in upstate New York, different in Vermont. It's going to be different. And even within a small area of the world, it's going to be different within that area. Your local hospital is going to charge something different than the hospital one town over. You got three different hospitals in your area. One is going to be different than the other two. And you're supposed to be a great consumer of healthcare and asking them what things are going to cost. And they don't want to tell you. The charge master they have in these places are designed to make sure that even they don't know. The system has been designed to feed upon itself, to feast. And in every opportunity to rein it in with regulation, they found a way around it. Why? Because government is supposed to be inefficient. And how do we know that? Because they keep defunding government. If you defund something, it becomes inefficient. And why is it inefficient? Because they don't want it to be. If government were efficient, and we demanded that it do what the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence is demanding, then they lose billions. Their desire for billions of dollars and the ability to maintain that status quo keeps us down. Let's be clear. It's not so much about the money. It's about the power. You have single-payer health care. You're not tied to a job. Suddenly, they can't coerce you to stay in that job. We have a federal jobs guarantee that sets a floor for the wages in this country. It sets the, sets the price to labor so that no matter what happens, you will always be able to have a job and it will be a living wage. Suddenly, they have to pay you more. Now, suddenly, you can leave a job if they treat you badly. It's not the money they fear. It's the power. The loss of power. The money is great. They already have so much of it, they can't possibly spend it all in a lifetime. So why are they still doing it? It's about power. They want the resources. They don't want you to have the resources. This is a day of reflection on the Declaration of Independence. What we are fighting right now is no different than what they fought back in 1776. They were under the boot of a tyrannical government. We are under the boot of a tyrannical oligarchy. The difference is going to be how we fight it. This time around, I expect it to be inclusive. This time around, I expect it to be not having to have this. What to the American slave is your 4th of July? I answer, a day that reveals to him more than all other days in the year the gross injustice and cruelty to which he is constant victim. Frederick, Frederick Douglass. We have always advanced the idea of liberty, justice, and every stage of the game we have left people out. So when we do it this time around, I expect that we, as progressives, even the neoliberals, they don't like the fact that it's not going to be the private sector, but they will all say that there should be equality. That no one should be left behind. We're going to have to take a good, hard look at the economic realities. Who has wealth? Who has been able to gather wealth over the last hundred years? Who has been included? Who was not? Who was at an advantage? Who was at a disadvantage? And if we want an inclusive, equality, equal society, we're going to have to do something about that. 
that's going to take reparations, not only for those of African descent and those of people of color, but also for Native Americans, for everything that has happened to the descendants of slaves, to everything that's happened to African Americans. God have mercy on our soul for what we did to the Native Americans. It's not about money. It's about resources. And whether it's white culture, whether it's oligarchy, it doesn't matter what it is. If you're in a position of privilege, we have been gobbling and gobbling and gobbling and taking and taking and taking and taking and more. And we have been throwing everyone else to the wolves. Why are we having this movement right now? Because the oligarchy have gotten so damn greedy that they have thrown 40 to 60% of the entire nation either in poverty or one bad paycheck away from falling into it. They took it too far. Now white America is waking up. Now white America has to deal with things like this. And on Independence Day, I want you thinking about this. This right here. You don't watch NFL for the anthem. So if you don't like the kneeling, just ignore it like you do racism and police brutality. We have a lot of soul searching to do. There is no end of the injustices that we're going to have to correct. So if you're not up to the task of doing it all, fair enough. Take care of your side of the street. Do what you can do. Talk to people. Don't be afraid. Do you have any idea how much love there is out there? Do you have any idea? Everyone loves their children. Everyone loves their community. So much so that they're afraid of other people coming in and overrunning it. But there is love. This is so important because it's the one thing we're going to have to capitalize on. This is why I talk about MMT all the time. This is why I talk about federal finance all the time. Because there is a kernel of truth to the idea that love is at the beginning, is at the core of everything. People that are against single-payer health care whether they're against it because they think it's not going to happen. It's an impossibility. Yes, I think we should have it, but it just can't happen. They're not going to let us do it. We're not going to be able to tax the rich. You know what? We're not going to be able to tax the rich. That is a very hard fight. They are organized and they have resources at their disposal to be able to stop us from having it. So let's stop doing that because we've been doing it for 40 years. Instead, let's first teach people federal finance so that they realize that Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution mandates that Congress creates the currency. And Richard Nixon took us off the gold standard in 1971. We create the currency, and we don't have to defend a gold reserve. We don't have to be able to rein in how much money we can put into circulation as a means of defending a gold reserve. We have to keep track of the resources so that we don't have inflation. That's it. But the point is, is that we don't have to tax the rich. We don't have to repatriatize money that corporations have been shoveling overseas. We don't have to raise corporate taxes. We don't have to do anything like that in order to be able to get single-payer health care. Doesn't have to happen. Do we have to tax the rich? Absolutely. Wealth inequality is immoral, and it has gotten to such levels that they're able to be able to purchase that which should never be for sale. They are purchasing Congress. They are purchasing media corporations. They are controlling the narrative. They are in control of everything we see and hear. That's why we have to be here on Facebook having this conversation. I have to do this because CNN is not going to. I have to do it because MSNBC isn't going to. But you have to ask yourself, 
if the federal government creates its own currency, what exactly is the matter with a large deficit? What exactly is the matter with debt? Is it debt? How could it possibly be debt? I didn't need your money to spend. And even if I did spend it, I can just create more to pay you back. There are detailed ways to show you exactly what is MMT, and I've done it before. I'm not going to do it again tonight. There's any number of ways you can do it. Check out Real Progressive, Steve Grumbine, Ellis Winningham. You know, Stephanie Kelton is the aha moment for me. She's my hero. Fidel Kaboob is amazing. You know, Stephen Hale, awesome. Warren Mosler, Scott Fulweiler. I could literally sit here for the entire hour and just list names and resources. You've got to be able to learn this because it's going to be the first thing that's going to let you be free. On this day of independence, I want you to be free. To be free of the notion that people need to be able to be taxed before we can save lives. To be free of the notion that they're going to come for your money to you, you, in order to be able to pay for something that maybe you don't want. I want you to be free so that when we go to Congress and we demand that they give us single-payer health care and they say, how are you going to pay for it? We will, with one loud, resounding voice. It will be federal appropriations. You will decide to do it. The government will create the currency and they will simply get it done. It is a moral hazard. It is a moral argument. You must give a single-payer health care. The Declaration of Independence says life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is within pardon me, the purview of the federal government to ensure that we get these things. And if we cannot have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness without single-payer health care, then that is what you must do. Do not tell me it is not government's role to do it. I'm telling you that it is. Why? Because I am the government. You are the government. We, the people, are the government. It's not just you, Mr. Congressman. It's not the oligarchs. It's not the ones in power. It's us. We decide. And the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence are on our side. So get it done. And that's not going to happen while the people that would otherwise fight for it don't because they think it's going to be a whole taxation battle. It's not about taxation. Don't need the rich. We need you to get on board. Which brings me to another of my favorite Frederick Douglass quotes. I prefer to be true to myself even at the hazard of incurring the ridicule of others, rather than be false and to incur my own abhorrence. Put it another way, you fight for what is right because it is right. You do what is in your heart to do. You hold true north within yourself, and you do not back down. I put it up there in the beginning credits to this show. I know it's kind of hokey. I know it's cheesy. I don't give a shit. In Captain America's Civil War, he says, when the entire country decides that something wrong is something right, when the entire country comes at you and says, move, your job is to plant yourself like a tree beside the river of truth and say, no. You move. To everyone that comes to me and says, why are you fighting for single-payer health care? We have to protect the ACA. No, you move. You're on the wrong side. You're fighting for scraps. I'm fighting for everything, and we could have it if you would get your head out of your ass. Learn federal economics. Realize that we can have it, because the federal government has the authority to do it, it has the mandate to do it, and it has the resources to be able to do it. 
you have been lied to as to why it's not happening, why it can't happen. It is a lie. So pay attention. I was just like you once. I was just like you, and when I found out the truth, I got really angry. Because I was fighting on the wrong side for the longest time. And I'm not putting up with it anymore. No, you move. I'm not putting up with this shit no more. I will hold true to myself. And I encourage you to hold true to yourself. This is our day. This is our year. This is our declaration of independence. We will not be oppressed any longer by oligarchs who say that we can't afford it, all while they stuff their pockets with our resources. Not the cash, the resources. We suffer, we languish, we die. All to make sure that their power is secure. No more. I will have no more of that shit. I want you to learn modern money. I want you to talk about it with your friends and your colleagues. I want you to be able to deluge CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, Jimmy Dore, you know, RT, everyone. Deluge everyone. Insist that they talk about it. Insist that it become the top story every night. Insist. Don't ask. Remember. If you are alone and you're insisting, yeah, you're a dick. But if you are part of 360 million people, you become a powerful force, an immovable object. No, you move. Do not accept less than your birthright. Do not accept less because someone else up there wants to be able to keep more and more and more. Do it for yourself. Do it for your family. Do it for your children, your communities, your future. How much time do you think we have left? Well, now is not the right time. We really got to start pursuing the ACA. Well, now is not the right time. We got to be able to get the Democratic Party. Now is not the right time. It's never been the right time. I've been hearing that shit for years, decades. Now is not the right time to be able to fuck that. It is always the right time to demand equality. It is always the right time to demand social justice, economic justice, gender equality, single payer health care. It is always the time to do the right thing. You want to be pragmatic? You look into the eyes of the people that will die for your pragmatism. You look to their families. You alleviate your conscience by saying, I saved as many as I could. No, you didn't. You allowed more people to die than you saved. And that alleviates your conscience. Let me alleviate you of that delusion. And let me remind you, I was you. I was you. I fought for the ACA, and my ass was broken when they denied the the, uh, public option. I wanted single-payer health care. I was told it's not the right time. I said, fine. Fine, it's not the right time. Well, let's get a public option going. Absolutely. Let's get a public option, everyone said. But nope, we don't even get that. It's because people don't understand economics, and neither did I back then. Neither did I. Why am I angry today? Because I was just like you. And I was for so long. And because that's the way they wanted it to be. They love it when we fight amongst ourselves. They love it. We're too busy fighting amongst ourselves. Ah, Hallelujah, say they. They don't have the time and the energy to be able to put up a proper resistance against us. I want very badly, very badly to be able to celebrate. 
I want to be able to have fireworks. I want to be able to be in that crowd and say, USA, USA. I want to be one of those people. But I simply know too much now. I know too much. It's difficult for me. It's very important that you know that I love this country. But more and more, what I love about this country is the possibilities of this country. Because more and more, the realities of this country are letting me down. The realities of this country needs a hard reset. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Well, let's make that true. Let's make that true. Let's expand it. That all people are created equal. That government of, by, and for the people will actually live up to that ideology for the people. It's never going to be that way if we keep insisting that the government is broke, that the government can't do X, Y, and Z because there's just not enough money, that we have to be in debt, and that's going to be a terrible thing for our children and our grandchildren. No, global warming is a terrible thing for our children and our grandchildren. 300,000 people dying every year because of for-profit health care is a horrible thing. Personal Debt is unsustainable. Government debt is not even debt. We have to be able to understand what we're talking about. We will forever and always be enslaved if we don't get it right. Just look at this. Look at everything that they're saying. Comparing the NHS in England and talking about what we could do with that kind of money. Talking about how much less it would cost. Talking about how much less it would cost than what we pay right now. They're still putting it in terms of cost. Trying to get us to believe, to care, that if we did single-payer health care, it would cost less. Like that is the overarching problem that is keeping us from having it. And I'm telling you that no, that is not the problem. That is not what is keeping us from having it. What's keeping us from having it is conversations like that. What's keeping us from having it is people believing that it is about cost. It's about resources. The federal government creates its own currency. As long as it is for sale in U.S. dollars, the federal government can pay it. It only matters to who is it going to pay. Is it going to be inflationary? And do we have the resources, the real resources to do it? Those are the only questions. Cost is only an important question because someone's going to have to get paid and we've got to write an accurate check. That's it. But as long as we're concerned with cost, people are going to be looking to their own wallets. That's the problem. If it's about cost and cost has to come from us, everyone looks to their own wallets. I don't want my tax dollars going toward whatever. Take it from the rich. We have lost that battle for 40 years and we will continue to lose for another 40 more. And how many people will die? every year of those 40 years. So do you want to fix the problem? Or do you want to keep punching the air? Are you in or are you out? If you're out, fine. I'll do it myself. I'll do it without you. I'll do it with as many people as I possibly can. But it will be easier if it's all of us. That's it for me for tonight. 
I love you guys. I love you guys very much. I need you to take care of yourself. I need you to take care of each other. I need you to learn federal finance. Stephanie Kelton, Steve Grumbine, Ellis Winningham, Randy Ray, Fidel Kaboob, Stephen Hale, Pavlina Chernova. Look up these people. Look up Deficit Owls. Look up Real Progressives. This is important. We need to be able to get this right. I'll be back next week. I believe Savage Joy is off tonight, so maybe check out one of her other videos. I love you guys. Share this around. Share the knowledge. Have a happy 4th of July. Remember, independence. We're not done. We're never going to be done. I love you guys. See you next week. Thank <laughs> you.